Hi, it's Danielle from the blog warmwithtime.com and in today's video I want to share with you how I spray milk paint on my vintage pieces. So a while ago I picked up an antique bed frame for our guest bedroom. I absolutely love this bed frame. It's so beautiful but it needed a new paint job. A lot of the paint was chipping off so we're going to give it a new paint job and kind of refresh it for our guest bedroom. Fortunately we actually have some guests coming in tomorrow that are going to be staying in our house for a week or so so we've really got to get this bed done so that our guests have a comfortable place to stay while they're here and i'm going to be taking you along with how exactly i spray milk paint i know when i was getting started with spraying milk paint i couldn't find a lot of resources out there so i hope that this video helps you if you are also interested in spraying milk paint i'm going to be walking you through from start to finish on how exactly i do that and we're going to be painting this beautiful antique bed frame for our guest bedroom so first things first I've already got the bed prepped and ready to go for paint so I've already sanded all of the loose paint off and then I went in and scrubbed everything wiped all the cobwebs and bugs off as much as possible I just used a simple Dawn dish soap and wiped everything down and then lastly we've also sprayed a coat of shellac over the entire piece the reason being is that shellac is a oil brace blocking primer that will basically block the stains that may come through our paint like the rust. And so the next step is to actually get your gun ready to go, get your paint in your gun and get your air compressor set to the settings that you'll need to actually spray your paint. So I first started with this siphon fed spray gun. I picked this up from amazon.com. It was really affordable. I think it was under $20. And what's great about this spray gun is that it's very user friendly. There's only two knobs one knob that adjusts the amount of paint that comes out of the gun and then another nozzle here to adjust how wide of a spray you want. It's probably user error but for me this gun gave my pieces a really textured orange peel finish piece and we just kept getting the same textured look. So that is when we switched to this HVLP Gravity fed spray gun. This gun has a lot more adjustments and basically because of that we think that we got a better result with this one but I do recommend you still could give the other one a try if you're interested in that because I know a lot of people have found success just personally for me we have not. And the second piece of equipment that you're going to need is obviously an air compressor to actually spray out your paint from your gun. So what size air compressor you need really depends on what kind of gun that you're using to spray your paint. For example the gun that we use to spray our milk paint it requires a minimum of 35 gallons for continuous spray but only a seven gallon minimum for intermittent spray. So for us, we're using a 20 gallon McGraw air compressor from Harbor Freight, which is not quite that 35 gallon minimum for continuous spray. So that means that we can still use it because it's over the seven gallon minimum for using it at all. Um, but we're just gonna get more of an intermittent spray. So that means that while we're when we're applying the milk paint, sometimes we just have to wait in between um, a full coat to just let the air compressor catch back up and get up to pressure before we continue going. And that just takes about 30 seconds. It's really not that big of a deal. So on our air compressor, we just set our hose pressure to about 60 PSI. That just gives us a good amount of spray pressure for our gun. So now it's time to actually get started with painting. So to load my paint into my sprayer, I like to filter my paint every single time. This prevents any lumps or clumps from clogging the gun and being a headache as I'm trying to get paint on this piece. So to load my gun, I just use a little metal filter that helps prevent those lumps and clumps from, from clogging up the sprayer. So I just run the paint through the filter. I kind of use a little fork or something just to help kind of guide it through. It's a really super fine mesh so sometimes even with the very thin consistency of milk paint it has a little bit of a hard time getting through the mesh but once I get it through the mesh the paint does not clog the gun at all and I never have any problems spraying the paint easily. So when it comes to actually spraying your paint we use short overlapping strokes to make sure we get a really good even coverage over the, over the piece. And we position our gun anywhere from six to about eight inches from the piece, just to make sure we're not getting too close or too far away from it. 
to actually apply the paint properly. And that seems to work really well for us. And while we're painting, we also rotate the nozzle vertical or horizontal depending on the shape of the piece. So for example, when we're painting the spindles that are more vertical, we'll rotate the nozzle on the spray gun to spray in the vertical position like this. But when we do like the tops of the bed or the crossbars, we'll rotate the nozzle horizontal to be able to spray those a little bit easier as well. And we find that those tricks really help to get a really good smooth, even coverage on the piece. Hope you enjoyed today's video and you found it helpful and informative when it comes to spraying milk paint. I would love to know your all's tips if you have any on spraying milk paint down in the comments. I think that would be really helpful for me as well. And until then, we have our bed. It's all done and just in time for our guests to come. Um, we have a lot to do in this room still, of course, but for now, it's a little bit more cozy than it was. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.